Hey everyone, this is Razor Scum here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Full Throttle Remastered. Um, now, in the last uh, episode, we jumped the Poyahoga Gorge, and we ended up landing in this uh, this industrial. Um, I don't know if it's an industrial building or uh, whatnot, but anyways, uh, what we'll do is we're gonna go. We're gonna go and just ride the bike down onto here, and oh, what the what the hell? Okay. Alright, so I guess we can't ride down there. But, uh, anyways, let's head on in and see what we've got. Souvenirs here! Ooh, souvenir guy. Uh, alright. Let's have a chat with him. <clears throat> what can I get you? Why all the lights down here? We got a demolition derby tonight. First prize is a vintage curly hardtail, completely restored by the old man himself. Yep. Yeah, so that's the bike that Rip Berger, uh referred to when he said that um, Maureen um, has an emotional attachment to a bike. Uh, I'm looking uh, for a good souvenir. Well, good souvenirs is all I got. What can I fix you up with? Something small, furry, and yellow. Something small, furry, and yellow. Sorry, this is the only set of teeth I got. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dang, there goes another one. How about that little car there? It's small, but it's not cheap, my friend. You better just take it for a test drive to make sure. Those uh, shirts come in extra, extra large. Eh. Eh, no, but they're pretty strong. No thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do those pennants say on them? Can't beat a Corley, they say. Kind of ironic, actually, considering how he died. Yeah. <laughs> so, look great on your bedroom wall. The walls. My bike is my home. We could set you up with a little pole so you could uh, make a flag, you know, for your back seat. I don't know. Think about it. Bunnies. And plenty of them. You want bunnies? I got your bunnies. How much you got on you? Uh, can I just take them out for a test drive? I think you may not be ready for the kind of commitment that comes with a Corley Bunny value pack. <laughs> Sorry, son. Do you actually have any money? As much as I need. Better let you get back to work. All right, matey. Yeah. Let's we see if we can test out this uh, RC car. All right. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. We got your pennants. We got it all right here. Uh, Official Corley Motors merchandise. Looks like it's getting weak. Oh, great. You killed the battery. Drive your own derby car by remote control. Our bunnies come with batteries included. Lovable, bunny. lovable little bunny. Uh, the officially licensed bunny of the Corley Motors Smashatorium. All right. Let's see the cash, amigo. I'll owe you. No bucks, no yucks, compadre. Hmm. Wait. Excuse me, but are those shirts, um, are they all cotton? Well, uh, let's just see here. Let's take the bunny. Yeah. 100% cotton. Oh, um, that's too bad. I'm allergic to cotton. Hmm. All sizes there is cotton. a minefield up ahead. Uh... We're going to uh, let's go across this map. I have to hop on the bike. Yeah, I don't uh, walk. Yeah, he, he doesn't like walking long distances. And let's hop on the bike. And we're off. side of this field. I've heard a lot about the vultures. And I guess it's all true. Yeah, so the vultures is the motorcycle gang that uh, Moraine hangs out with. Those and weapons were a lot of weight. That was weirdly edited. Mm. 
<laughs> this is one of my favourite parts of the game. Just watching these bunnies right of the Valkyries. Just popping off and blowing up into oblivion. What is that? How power blast brand. How ironic. Hmm. I guess we can go on back to the souvenir guy. And right. <laughs> Fill our handy beverage hats with your drink of choice. Use battery with RC car. That should put some life into it. You'll be keeping cold and looking bold. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. Go out of range we shall. Souvenirs to remind you of your special smashatory adventure. Buy your kids a bunny so they'll shut up on the long drive home. Okay, that's far enough, bud. Alright, let's... I'm just gonna annoy him. Let's bring her back now. Demo's over. No, it isn't. Hey, don't go in there. Now look what you did. The entrance is all the way through the factory. Hang on, little buddy. Daddy's coming. <laughs> now it's just me and the bunnies. Bunnies scored. Now, off to Marine we go. And. Start the bike. Eh. I hate this part. So the reason why we're here is um, we're trying to get to Moraine and she's part of the vultures. Now the problem is is that the vultures have a minefield that's set up right in front of them and we can use those bunnies to um, make our way across the minefield because, you know, they blow up and, you know, cute little fairy bulls or whatever. And yeah, so... That'll pretty much allow us to clear the way. Um, let's go get the bunnies. I'm just going to be grabbing pretty much every bunny that comes out and making sure that they only go one at a time. Yeah. One bunny, and he's gonna blow in a, a second or two. Yeah, boom! No. And I don't want to set off. Mm. No, I don't want to set off any of these boys. Don't think so. Here's another one. Boom. No. I don't want to set off any of these. Now for the third one. 
Don't think so. That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures, rack them up. Oh shit. Let's rip them quick. Listen, Mo. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben, you're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kid. <laughs> Let's draw this out. It's really weird because I grew up as a fan of um, Rugrats and just hearing Tress McNall's voice in a completely different context. Um, you know, if, if you're a Rugrats fan, um, Chris McNall is the voice of. Um, is, it, is, is it Charlotte? Uh, Drew's wife? Yeah. You know, she's the one who's always on the phone and she's the mother of Angelica. And she's also the voice of. Um, Agnes Skinner and um, some of the businesswoman in The Simpsons as well. So it's just, it's really strange picking up her voice in something like this. Uh, oh, right. Let's see what we've got here. Your father. Uh, Don't you dare talk about my father, you heartless bastard. Gorley and I. I said shut up about my dad. No. I'm losing my temper, Maureen. And you're about to lose a much more. Ooh. Ben's got everything to lose. I'm losing my temper, Maureen. And you're about to lose a much more. No. Okay, that's enough. Mm, not, not enough. <clears throat> Malcolm wants. I said shut up about my dad. I'm innocent. You're in something, all right. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll sick the polecats on you. The polecats are in jail, Ben. <laughs> oh, damn. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll tear this place apart. Ironic choice of words, Ben. <laughs> Let me go or else or else what? I'll get blood all over your driveway. That's good for the landscaping actually. <laughs> um Let me go or else or else what? Let's get for this. Call your names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How? How'd you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. Rip Burger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I, I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No, we have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Ripburger canceled the shareholders meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So, no shareholders meeting until we're both dead? Hmm. That could be arranged. Okay, mm. so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. 
Adrian Ripburger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hardtail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, ooh. question. Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Moe's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Moe clear of the explosions, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her rejecting out of her car? No, they'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have. When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> That's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow you little darlings up. All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, because it's time to start. The Corley Motor Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiators. That mysterious looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be and we're in the most obviously disguised. Oh, is that George Lucas there? That that has to be George Lucas. Please tell me that's George Lucas. <laughs> now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another masked newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute to the princess of pile-up, Doreen Smorley. Oh, my boys. Sick of it. And finally, mm. we have a last-minute addition to the lineup tonight. A deadly-looking team known as the Boom Boom, boom Brothers. brothers. <laughs> This is gonna be pretty straightforward. Gonna watch out for the Boom Boom Brothers, Mo. Let me see if I can ram this car. Gonna ram this car off the ramp. Might be easier to go for this one instead. He's taken out. And now we're just gonna take this car and shove it across the stadium. Yeah. 
Oh, what the hell? I think that's great. And okay, Mo. Time for our big finale. Do it. Time for the big boom boom. gonna make this situation less for ourselves. <laughs> oh dear. Well okay, you heard of Avenger. Ben, quit clowning around and make a diversion. I am a diversion. No, Ben, we need a bigger one. The bike is guarded. Who cares about the bike? Mo says it's important, so we're not leaving without it. Alright, I'll see what I can do, but I'm burning at both ends here. Oh, it's not gonna remain calm. It's <laughs> still the bike. Finally. Now, squish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run. I... I don't think it's necessarily the brightest idea to run after a guy that's, you know, on fire while you're in a petroleum-filled uh, vehicle, but what the hey. Uh, let's go in. It's, it's fire retardant, I guess. Uh, what happened? Did you get him? 
We finally got him, Bolas. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised, and give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Oh. Hmm. Fun to smell. What's that? The temperature light? <laughs> well, on the well, side, taken care of. I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders meeting. Oh. Where's the hard tail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put it back together in about a half an hour. That's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike, but I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. Oh. Okay. Anyways, I think that's uh, enough for today's episode. Um, you know, um, don't forget to check out my Facebook page and subscribe. It's uh, one of the little buttons just underneath this video. Um, leave a comment and let me know what you think. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.